walking up and down. He's not too happy with his uh, defense's performance right now. This would certainly boost the Hurricanes' morale and quiet the crowd somewhat if they went in and scored the first possession in the second half. 31-yard line, third and five for the Hurricanes. Crowd. I can't say coming to life. They've been alive all night. Ball is complete to Eddie Brown at the 25. That's going to be a first down Miami. You're watching Hurricane football on WSBN, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, South Florida, 7. That was a good, as you can see from the end zone camera, they had two receivers down there. Griffin was just inside of, of Brown. It looked like the ball was going to him early. And he got it out to Brown on the sideline for the first down. Steve Bloodworth, the stopper for FSU. We'll call it the 24-yard line. First and 10 Hurricanes down by two points. Counter to Griffin, and he is at the 20-yard line. Again, good blocking by the Hurricane front line. Another trap play with the counteraction. Sending Griffin go right up the middle. Isaac Williams on the stop. Let's watch Glenn Dennison, the tight end, not known for blocking. But he's sure doing the job. He's hitting into the, to the defensive end or the outside linebacker, whatever you want to call him. And he guarded him against getting into the inside and to the ball. Gain of almost five. We'll call it second and five, just inside the 20. Starting unit personnel in there for the Hurricanes. Running game again. Bentley in trouble. Makes up Griffin in trouble. And down he goes. Bentley in trouble. Had to be one of the two. Albert Bentley. Loss on the play of about three yards. Out to the 22. It'll bring up a third down for the Hurricanes. About eight yards to go. The Hurricanes have moved down the field. Four and a half minutes on this drive. 10-16 to go. Sure passing situation. A crucial third down for Miami. These situations. Stanley Shakespeare, the wide receiver. Kosar trying to audible above the noise of this huge crowd, a record crowd. Blitz coming. He gets it away. It's complete to Eddie Brown inside the 15. Brown still on his feet. Pushed out at about the 13-yard line. And it is going to be good for a hurricane first down. That's the first time that, that we could visibly see Kosar getting the check off out to his wide receivers. He did it with one second to go on the 25 second clock and then just got the ball away before he was nailed in the back. Eddie Brown, the leading receiver for the Hurricanes, number 40. He now has six catches, 101 yards. He just gave the Hurricanes a first down. 13 yard line in Seminole territory. Brown splits out near side. Stanley Shakespeare, the flanker, far side. Albert Bentley, Keith Griffin, behind Kosar. Another check off. Griffin runs through two tackles. He's going to be stopped at a rock about the line of scrimmage. Good pursuit by the Seminoles. Number 38 finally making the stop. Kenny Rowe, who has lasted the whole game despite that chronic sore shoulder that he had. And you can see an unhappy coach Nellenberger. Nellenberger just in sense. Look at those seven league strides along the sideline. He's not very happy. And I don't know why. That play gained a yard. It'll be second and nine at the 12. But as you can see, the halfback turning around to the fullback, telling him what the play was. They're having a hard time hearing Kosar, and it's had a real effect on the Hurricane offense. If they could score and get ahead, I think the crowd would quiet down quite a bit, and then it would make it much easier for the Hurricane offense. Another delay in play down there. The Hurricane offensive players giving ground. Perhaps Howard Schnellenberger was incensed about a flag that we didn't see along the far sideline. Let's go down to Andy on the sideline. Okay, the word down here is that Schnellenberger was trying to get the referee to get some photographers away from in front of the 25 second clock. Bernie Kosar couldn't see it. David. You can see the official, or we can see if he's out of your picture now, in the end zone to our right down there telling those photographers, you have to stay clear of that clock. Let's give the quarterback a chance. He's running back into your picture now. He has got the, this series, there's been a couple of plays where he's gotten the ball, the ball off with less than three seconds to go. You can see the policeman down there keeping the fans away from the clock so our quarterback can see it. Second down for the Hurricanes. 
eight yards to go. Kosar in big trouble. He's sacked at the 25. And that hurts. He was knocked down hard. 98 getting up off of that play is Brad Foytek. He could be hurt. He was just bent over backwards. That's going to be go for a sore back. Bernie comes out of there limping a little bit. And he's trying to walk it off back around the 35-yard line. He's a courageous youngster, very cool. And he may have to go over here and say, Coach, it can't go on. And we will be back to determine what the situation is right after this timeout. Hurricanes lead. They are trailing by 7 to nothing. So, Jerry, you're going to buy a video recorder, huh? Yep. Jerry, Jerry, trust me. You want the one with the high writing No, 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 no. Believe me, Jerry, you need convenient front loading. Hey, my friend, programmability. What are you talking about? Programmability, No matter what you hear, one name is the standard against which all video cassette recorders are compared. Guys, guys, guys. I want the Sony. I was going to say Sony. Me too. Betamax, the Sony of VCRs. Bernie Kosar has just gotten a little smelling salts along the sidelines. We'll show you what produced that. He goes back to pass, and he is smoked. Number, number 45 is Isaac Williams, blitzing defensive back. And he is the man primarily responsible for the grogginess inside Bernie Kosar's head right now. Now, I must say, when a defensive back has a chance to do that, as you can see, to Kosar, 13, 23, 161 yards, still pretty good stats for not uh, being totally productive. It is going to be third and about 20 coming up for the Hurricanes now. Ball is at the 24-yard line. Only two wide receivers in the ball game. Bernie under pressure again, gets it away. Eddie Brown, no, at the goal line. Eddie Brown under good coverage by 43 for the Seminoles. Brian McCrary could not go up the ladder to take in the pass at the goal line. It's about six inches too tall. Kosar under extreme taller. pressure back there. Did a pretty good job of getting that ball away. We're going to see Jeff Davis trying the field goal to put the Hurricanes ahead. Good defense by Florida State. They've held off another hurricane drive. 8.34 left to go in the third quarter. They'll spot this ball. Rick Tootin will be the holder. He'll spot it between the 31 and 32. It will be officially a 42-yard attempt by Jeff Defeat Davis from the far hash mark. Ball is down. There it goes. It is no good. Off to the far side. Davis fails to convert. The score remains Florida State 9, Miami 7, and we'll be back. The only difference between these 84 Corvettes is the gasoline they're using. This one accelerates faster with Amico Premium Lead Free. It's the highest octane lead free you can buy, and the same high performance gasoline that helps solve engine problems like knock and run on in your car. You expect more from Amico, and premium performance is one way you get it. 8.30 remaining in the third period. Hurricanes back on the defense. Bernie Kosar getting some rest along the sideline after that tough hit. Jones gets the handoff up the middle. And he has maybe five yards out near the 29-yard line. Kenny Sis making the stop on that last play. Kosar continues to try to walk it off. There's an awful lot of quarterbacks, Dave, if they got hit that hard, wouldn't be walking around like Kosar is. He's a tough young man. Big, strong kid. Gain of four on that last play. We'll call it second and six. Davis with a deep handoff to Allen. Allen skips around a tackle, reverses his field. He's tough to bring down. He's got a first down. He is out in the clear and is tackled after he crosses the 40-yard line. And it looked like he may have lost the ball down there and, and recovered it himself. That's... That's where you can see that Allen is just a great runner. He has one shot at him there. He comes back, another shot at him there. Keeps it, his legs, winds through, uses the referee as a blocker, fumbles the ball, falls on it. Play carries out to the 41-yard line. That's how you use the 12th man. You use that ref as a blocker going down the sideline. Intelligent running by Greg Allen. 
Fake goes to him. Davis still with the ball. Gets it out there to Wheeler. Wheeler is at the 45-yard line before he's pushed out of bounds by Julio Cortez. Seminoles using a lot of crossing patterns. Play fake. And then hitting that crossing receiver. They've had the halfback in the flat wide open three or four times. They've hit him and made a 10-yard game as a gain as the Hurricanes are getting good drops by their linebackers, but they're they're dropping too too deep when you have that receiver crossing. Second and six here. Allen running the ball near midfield at the 48-yard line. Danny Brown getting up off of that stack. He was one of the leading stoppers for Miami. Also in there, Kenny Sisk. We'll keep you updated on Kosar. It looks like he's now to his senses a little bit more. Getting ready to go back in when the Hurricanes regain control of the ball. 6.52 remaining in the third period of play. Seminoles a squeaky two-point margin at 9-7. Third and about three, flag goes down. Allen goes around the corner, gets loose. He was probably knocked out of bounds and was at the 41-yard line. We will check the infraction indicated by the flag back at the Seminole 40. Early indication is that it is against the Seminoles. Could be illegal motion, but we'll check for you. Speaking of Greg Allen, they list him on the program as 6-0 and 200. We are told by hurricane sources he goes at least 210. And a strong 210 at that. No, we're set a Referee second. Schmidt. Uh, we have motion on Florida State. We're not set a second. Third down. As you heard the referee, the back was not set for a full second. Makes it third and about eight yards to go for the Knowles. As you can see on your screen, Greg Allen has now rushed for over a thousand yards this season. I think he did it in the first quarter, Dave. I, he needed only 12 coming into the ball game. Timeout going down on the field. Here comes Davis to the sidelines to check with Bobby Bob, and we'll go back to Miami for this. The truck world has just been turned upside down. Introducing the 1984 Toyotas, the next generation of Toyota trucks. The best-looking Toyotas ever. With a new extra cab, the roomiest Toyota ever. And with this SR5, the most powerful Toyota ever, thanks to the first-of-its-kind electronic fuel injection. The truck world will never be the same. Oh, what a feeling, Toyota. Quickly down to the sidelines we go, and Andrew Lascano. David, I don't know how extreme it is all the way up and down the sidelines, but we start noticing some things, some attitudes similar to the Florida game, the game, the only game of the season that Miami lost, but offensive line Chris Bogotis is also walking up and down the sidelines, telling everybody, we must keep our poise. That's the important thing here. Dave? Chris Bogotis has done an excellent job with the offensive line for the Hurricanes. Right now, the defensive line on the field. Florida State has the ball, third down. Eight yards to go at their 44-yard line. Davis throwing. Has a man out there. Complete. At the 36 of Miami. Ouija make that uh, Hassan Jones making the play, making the reception. Be a first down for the Seminoles at the Miami 36. I wouldn't be surprised the way Bob Davis is throwing tonight that he might be a better passer than Kelly Lowry had he been in there. I think this young quarterback is doing a very fine job in such an important game. Young man out of Warner Robbins, Georgia, coached up there by his father. This running play is going almost nowhere. Winston Moss in there to cut it down for the Hurricanes. Greg Allen, the ball carrier for the Seminoles, no gain. Shuffling the wide receivers. Ouija Thompson, 18 out. Hassan Jones, 88, coming into the ball game, carrying plays. Bobby Bowden likes to shuffle a lot of people in and out of there. Keeps his troops fresh. A nice, crisp, fresh night going here. The delay. That's Allen. He's loose. He's inside the 25. Falls forward to about the 23 yard line. Seminoles beginning to eat up yardage, driving the football on the Miami defense. Again, the, the sprint draw that 
The Seminoles are running with Allen at the helm. Fred Robinson pursuing the play from defensive tackle downfield to make the stop. First down, Seminoles, 23-yard line of Miami. Bowden is fortunate to have another back in Snipes that uh, is just as tough as Allen. Fullback Jones gets the handoff this time. He is into the 20. Hit and thrown back by Kevin Fagan, along with Jay Brophy for the Hurricane. Gain of three yards on that play. It'll be second and seven. 77 coming into the ballgame is tackle John Ayanata. He replaces Jimbo Thompson, the brother of wide receiver Ouija Thompson. They've been in there playing together, the brother tandem for these Seminoles. Fake reverse. Instead, it goes to Roosevelt Snipes. Hurricane somewhat fooled on the play, and Snipes breaks through to the 10-yard line. The Seminoles started the reverse action. Miami watched that, and then there was a quick handoff, as you can see, to Roosevelt Snipes. And he broke through some tacklers, got substantial yardage for Reggie Sutton and Eddie Williams make the stop for Miami. And the Seminoles urging the crowd, let's go, let's go. Two great running backs you're seeing tonight for the Seminoles. One gets tired and comes off, the other one comes in and hammering away at you. First down at the 10-yard line. This is Snipes, breaks a tackle. He's to the five. Roll out of bounds right along the five-yard line. Reggie Sutton came up, had a chance to get him for no gain. And all he got was a two-string. Seminole running game looking relentless. Almost awesome here, deep in the third period of play. Seminoles want to get another score, perhaps salt this one away. They lead by nine to seven by the margin of that safety on the block punt in the first half. Slot formation to the right this time. You look at Davis. Davis gives it to Snipes. Snipes dives near the end zone. They're going to say he is short, but not by more than an inch or two. Kenny Sisk he bounced. and Eddie Williams the tackle. He bounced on the six-inch line, Dave. That big offensive line of Florida State coming right at you, opening the holes. Snipes staggered at the five and just dived into the six-inch line. Close, Seminoles with a third down. Just outside the Miami goal. isn't sharp and clear enough to show it. Step ahead of your time to a Panasonic video camera that focuses automatically and adjusts to light, even low light. Step ahead of your time to a stereo video recorder that records from TV or from life with forehead technology for jitter-free effects from slow motion to slow ahead of your time to Panasonic Omnivision Video Systems and Panasonic Color Television. More than just slightly ahead of our time. Barry Barco getting set to kick it away for the Seminoles. Reggie Sutton deep for Miami, drifting over at the five-yard line. And he's coming. Reggie 
Sutton over the 30. He's dragged down at the 35-yard line. Eric Riley making the stop. Barry Barco, the, the kicker, he came up made a form tackle. A 30-yard return. Make that a 27-yard return. There's the Florida State scoring drive. 12 plays, 75 yards. 5.07 on the clock. A one-yard run by Davis. And here is that run. Davis just picking his spot behind that huge right side of the Seminole offensive line and getting into pay dirt. He was stopped at first, and in that second surge, got him across. First and ten, Hurricanes on the field now. They mark it at the 36. Hurricanes with the ball. Give to Albert Bentley. Can't find much. Seminole defense rising to the occasion. Brad Boytick, number 98, leading the defense, and it's charged there that stopped Albert Bentley. You see the clock inside three minutes, third period of play. That uncomfortable nine-point margin, uncomfortable for the team that's behind because you have to score a touchdown and kick a field goal to get back in the ballgame and get back in the lead. Gain of a couple on that play. Call it second and eight. Kosar has Glenn Dennison. Dennison at the 45, trying for the first down. He looks to be a little bit short. It's a 45. He needed to go to the 46. When in trouble, go to your favorite receiver. And that's a man with the sure hands, Glenn Dennison. Senior tight end, as we have told you, the Hurricanes all-time leading receiver on a seasonal and career basis. They're going to measure for the first down here. Kosar will see close up that it's just about a yard short. distance you saw indicated on the change remaining for a Miami first down. They need to keep this drive alive. Big play Points for the Hurricanes. The board. This is indeed a big play. Three tight ends in the ballgame for Miami. Seven man front, Florida State. Bentley struggling. He has it. Bentley gets the first down for the Hurricanes. Running across the right side of the line where Stu Schnellenberger, Alvin Ward, David Heffernan out there doing the blocking. An important first down. The Hurricanes with 155 left in the third quarter. Need to score this time to stay in the game. The line of scrimmage, the 48-yard line in Hurricane territory. I formation. Bentley and Griffin behind Kosar. They adjust. Those are checking off at the line of scrimmage. Eddie Brown out of bounds at the 39-yard line. Kosar fired that pass. That was a bullet. Kosar is showing no ill effects now from the hard lick he took a few minutes ago on the sack. Getting around pretty well on that ball that's called. First and 10, Miami. Seminole 39-yard line. Canes down by nine. A minute and a half, third period. Biggest ball game ever in Miami history. Again, Kosar checking off. He's going to throw it. On first down, has a man, Keith Griffin, down at about the 36 is where his forward progress is going to be marked. That'll be a gain of just about three yards. You can see Kosar talking to quarterback coach Mark Pressman, Coach Nellenberger on the sideline. They're not going to give him forward progress. Let's see where they spot this. They're milling around just a little bit down there along the far sideline. They're going to give him a gain of only a little over a yard. We'll call it second and eight to 37. Wide receivers. That's Shakespeare at the bottom of your screen, number six. Seminole with 11 people on the line. Now the safety comes out again. Show blitz and come out of it. Kosar with plenty of time. Knocked away from Eddie Brown. Number nine on the defense is Steve Bloodworth for Florida State. Knocking that pass out of the hands of Eddie Brown. And almost in his hands. Bloodworth uh, almost made the interception. Very good play by... Bloodworth, when a quarterback has that much time to throw, his percentage of completion increases immensely. It's going to be a real testing situation for the Canes now. Third down, a long eight to go to keep this drive alive. 
They need points on the scoreboard. Seminole fans being encouraged to get loud by the big message board in the end zone to our right. Eddie Brown has the ball. He has a touchdown, Miami. That was a superb pass by Cosa. Eddie Brown, the man whom Coach Howard Schnellenberger has likened to Paul Warfield, the Dolphin of your era, Dick. Putting six points on the board for the Hurricanes. Schnellenberger's coached them both, and I don't think they're, in my mind, Warfield was the greatest receiver ever to play football. And if Schnellenberger thinks that Brown is close to him, he's darn good. 16 to 13 now. The Seminoles lead. Jeff Lee with an important point after touchdown try here. You see it. The kick is up. The kick is good. And the lead is cut to two. Florida State 16, Miami 14. We'll be back to Dope Campbell Stadium in a minute. This Bud's for everyone who takes on the heavy loads. This Bud's for you. Just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do, for you. It's unpredictable out there. Changing. Confusing. It's so hard to find your way. Wherever you're going in this world, if it has anything to do with money, there's a clearer, safer, easier way to get. Take someone along who knows the way. Kickoff in the air, taken by Roosevelt Snipes at the goal line. Snipes staggers, gets away from people. He is running laterally along the 20, and he is knocked down by the Hurricanes. Number 90 on the play, Victor Morris, making the special teams hit for the Hurricanes. See those Seminole kickoff men and running backs are really tough. As we see the Miami scoring drive, seven plays, 64 yards, took them 252. And here we see the touchdown. Kosar back, fires quick to Brown, catches it underhanded flies into the end zone. First and 10 Seminoles at the 20. Crowd a little bit quieter now. And off to Jones, right side. Gang tackled by a host of Hurricanes. Jay Brophy in there. Miami's success on defense this year has been when they get ahead, they've been able to force the other team to throw the ball and play their kind of defense. But tonight, with the Seminoles even with them or now ahead of them, they've been able to establish, been able to establish a running game that, that's very successful. Clock ran out. It's the end of the third quarter. With this, we'll be back for the fourth quarter in a moment. Olympic bobsledding. Our lives depend on our equipment. She's got to hold together under more G-forces than a space shot. The whole team pitches in, because coming down the run, the sled's all we've got. The Olympics take teamwork, and Budweiser is proud to be part of that team. This Bud's for you. In a rarefied world of $40,000 luxury sedans, the BMW 733i is rare indeed. For it not only offers a host of luxury appointments, but something uncommon in this class, high performance. Morning, will sir. Morning, sir. Perhaps that's why chauffeur-driven BMWs are seldom driven by their chauffeurs. Buckled up, Wilson? Buckled up, sir. Contact your Miami, Fort Lauderdale, and Papano Beach BMW dealer for a thorough test drive. You see the four fingers being held up by the Seminole players. That indicates the fourth quarter belongs to us. That is a tradition here at Florida State. The Seminoles feel they own the fourth quarter. They have outscored their opponents this year in the fourth quarter. 
84 to 80. They have played exciting fourth quarters, to say the least. A lot of, a lot of scores in the fourth for quarter. The action, fans. Second down and seven yards to go. Seminoles Davis to throw the football. Almost intercepted by Kenny Sisk. And he knocks it away from the intended receiver at the 35-yard line. Going for Jesse Hester. That's one of the finest plays I've seen the linebacker make tonight. He was held up by play pass action when the quarterback rolled out. He sprinted back to the zone that he was supposed to get in. He got his hand on the, on the ball. He was deep enough to, to get in front of the receivers. Great play by Sisk on that pass. He almost had his second interception of the year. He got his first against Notre Dame. Also owns a sack and a fumble recovery this year. Key part of the Miami defense. Davis to throw again under pressure. Gets it away. This is Snipes. Snipes at the first down marker at the 30 is knocked down, but he may have a first down for the Seminoles. Kenny Calhoun up to make the stop for Miami. But it looks like Snipes on the crossing pattern indeed has carried the ball for a Seminole first down at the 31. Get a man that quick. There are three Hurricanes chasing him. And he was pulling away from him. Those are the best two running backs that we've seen all year. Dave, Florida has great running backs, but they're not as quick as, as Allen and Snipes by any means. First down, Seminoles for 31. Davis to throw on first down, has a man out there. Snipes again, and he's knocked down in his tracks. But after a gain of about five, Julio Cortez, number 99, over to make the stop. If the Hurricanes are going to stop the Seminoles this time, they're going to have to get a little bit tighter. They're going to be playing more man-to-man -man defense. They had been in zone defense with deep drops, and Florida State had success underneath them. I think you're going to see a lot more man-to-man -man defense with some blitzes thrown in in this fourth quarter. Second and a short five to go for the Knowles. Davis not playing it conservatively. Gets it out there. It's complete. Hassan Jones with it. I Sits beg your making pardon. the that tackle. Is, that is number 82, and that is Tony Johnson, the receiver. And let's watch the drop of the secondary for the University of Miami on the wide replay. It's a wide replay. The linebackers are not playing quite as deep as they were earlier in the game. Sis came up to make the tackle on a little uh, delay and in. The Seminoles ran, but it was enough for the first down, or very close to it. Just about that short, as you see. Bring up third down and just under one. FSU rushers, Snipes and Allen combining for 177, 167 yards tonight. Allen with 76 yards on 13 carries. Snipes, 91 yards now. He also has 13 carries, a balanced workload for the two fine Seminole tailbacks. The clock is rolling, 13.30 to be played in the ball game. Third and short Seminoles. Two tight ends in the ball game. Did he get it? Officials unstack him quickly. Snipes the ball carrier. I think he just barely made it. Dave, they're putting the ball down, but they're bringing out a measurement. Fans are not very happy with where the placement was. It looks from my angle as though they do have it by just an inch. Yes, the nose of the football. <laughs> they stripe forward. We're a long way away from the field, but we're dead on line on the 40-yard line. And we're wrong. He made it by six inches. He did not make it. Oh. He is short. Sure. He did not make it. He is short. Watch the block by McCormick on the attempt at any rate. Working against McMurray. Has a handful of jersey. It's a good offensive lineman that can stay with a defensive man for that length of time to get the play working. On fourth and short, the Seminoles, they know they need to keep this drive alive. They're going to go for it. There's the quarterback sneak, and he has it easily. <laughs> Davis on the sneak. Converts the fourth down gamble for Bobby Bowden and the Florida State Seminoles. They lead by a couple with 13 minutes left in the ballgame. And they maintain possession of the football. One of the, the interesting facts about offensive linemen is 
a lot of them, a lot of coaches like tall offensive linemen. I like a short one that weighs a lot because you can't get underneath them. They've got that great leverage to get underneath the defensive linemen and make good crisp blocks. McCormick with excellent technique trying to spring Jones. For that play, he doesn't get much, takes it over the 45. As we can see, Jamie Duke's walking back to the huddle. He's only 6'1". He looks like he's a lot shorter than that, but at 285 pounds, that's a lot of man. And every one of those quarterback sneaks, the quarterback Davis has been right behind Dukes. Jay Brophy made the stop on that play. It gained four yards. Second and six. 46-yard line. Davis the play fake. Has a man. Ball knocked away. He was going for Johnson out there, but the Hurricane defense closed quickly. Let's take an isolated look at the receiver on this play. Johnson comes down. He gets pushed a little bit off his line. Breaks to the middle. Three Hurricanes had a chance to intercept this and just misjudged the ball. Reggie Sutton, Sutton coming in from the left. Calhoun in from the right. A defensive back cannot miss that ball when they get the opportunity. Reggie Sutton with the opportunity to make the interception. Knock the ball away. Third down. Six yards to go. Seminoles 46-yard line in their territory. Davis will throw it again. Snipes. He has the first down. Out of bounds inside the 45 to 44 yard line. That's the same play. Fake to him coming in the middle. Bows out to the strong side of the field. With the deep drops, they're, they're getting uh, on the strong side. He's wide open, and, and with that speed that Snipes has, he just outruns everybody outside. No one had a chance to hit him. The Seminoles with the Hurricanes snapping at their heels score 16 to 14. They want to maintain possession of this football, and they are doing so. The Hurricanes First and 10 at the 44 in Miami territory. The Hurricanes are going to win. The defense has to make a big play. They need to get the ball back for their offense. This is Snipes. Working his way. Rolled out of bounds at the 40. Very good job by the Hurricane defense. Stringing the play out. Brophy's over there. Rodney Bellinger also in on the stop. Bellinger did a good job keeping the, uh, the receiver off of him. As you can see, Seminole fans wore paint. They came to play tonight. The fans came to cheer as the noise they're making is really a 12th man on the field against Miami. They are seeing and you are seeing a Cracker Jack ball game from Bill Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee. A record sold out crowd. Miami with the uh, Seminoles with the ball. Second and about seven at the 40. Option play Davis. Pitch to Snipes. Running room near the 30. He has a first down. This is interesting that Bowden on every long drive has kept the back end the whole time. You'd think that most coaches would alternate them every other play or every two or three plays. Bowden's been successful in letting the people get their breath back uh, for a whole series. Rodney Bellinger made that last stop, and he is having to be helped off the field by Doc Kelbach. It looks like he may have hurt his arm. Joe Kalbach, the team doctor in the tan coat, assisting Rodney Bellinger, a key performer, especially in stopping the running game for making, the Hurricanes. Making that kind of tackle and getting a knee or a foot uh, on the arm, he could have broken it. Bellinger, the senior out of Coral Gables High. Seminoles made a first down on that play. Lucius Delegal coming in to replace Rodney Bellinger. First down, Seminoles 31. This is Jones on the quick hitter off the left side. And he'll get two or three yards out of it. Reggie Sutton up to help with the stop there. Winston Moss also there. You can see the chill of the air here at Doak Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee. A crisp fall night. Temperature into the 40s by now. I don't think anybody notices the temperature in this stadium. It's gotten very warm in here. Things are hot on the field. A gain of, we'll call it four on that last play. Second and six. 28-yard line. Jones again, and he is hit right at the line of scrimmage. Number 98 for the Hurricanes. Getting up over there is Jerome Brown, a freshman, defensive tackle, 6'3", 255. He's like the Hurricanes' designated sacker. When he's in the ballgame, he's usually there to go after the quarterback. Six sacks on the season, the second-leading sacker on the Miami team. Brown has done a good job every time he's been in for Brooksville, Florida. 
You're going to see three more years of Mr. Brown. I think he'll start next year. Loss of a couple on that play. Third and we'll call it nine for the Seminoles. Davis, pressure coming on him, gets the ball away. One of the Miami defenders, Bellinger, who's back in there, fell down, but the pass was overthrown intending for Hester down at the 10. No flags on the play. We're going to bring up a fourth down for the Seminoles. Let's take a look in isolation at Jesse Hester, the intended receiver. Now, this is what defensive worry about, the quick speed. He just fell down. He was wide open, but he broke it a little bit too inside to start with, or he would have had the uh, wide open reception. Field goal attempt coming up. Philip Paul on the field for the Seminoles from the 37-yard line. It'll be a 47-yard attempt. Knowles leading it by two. Kick is up. It is short. No good. It was straight enough, Dave, but it was short. Junior place kicker Philip Hall failing to add to the Florida State 16 to 14 margin. We'll be back after this. Panasonic invites you to step ahead of your time to a Panasonic video camera that focuses automatically and adjusts to light, even low light. To a stereo video recorder that records from TV or from life with forehead technology for jitter-free effects from slow motion to stop motion. Step ahead of your time to a Panasonic Omnivision video system. More than just slightly ahead of our time. as the Hurricanes have gotten the ball back and want to drive for the points that could put them ahead in this critical ball game. Nowhere to go that time. With all the pursuit that the Seminoles have right now, I would think it'd be an ideal time for that little screen. We'll see what the Hurricanes do with it. Loss of a yard on the play, second and 11. 29 yard line in Miami territory. Stanley Shakespeare near side, Eddie Brown far side. Kosar looking for the screen. Gets it away to Bentley. He's in trouble. Got to be thrown for a big loss inside the 20-yard line. Neither the coaches nor I called a very good play that time. I think the Seminoles knew what was coming, too. Defensive back Pat Milligan, 19, diagnosing it for FSU. It's going to be a loss of 10 on the play. It's going to bring up third and 21 for the Hurricanes. A situation in which they need to convert, keep the ball, and drive downfield. They keep only two wide receivers in there. They are Brown and Shakespeare. Pressure coming on Kosar. Gets it away. Shakespeare wide open. Short of the first down at the 34-yard line. Running him out of bounds across the way. Eric Riley. And it will bring up a punting situation for Miami. Rick Tootin in the ballgame. 8.33 to go. The Hurricanes need to kick the ball away deep and then stop that explosive 7-0 offense that they haven't been able to stop thus far tonight. There is Hassan Jones settling in to receive the kick from freshman putter Rick Tootin. 8.33 left in the ballgame. Seminoles, 10 men on the line of scrimmage. Now they drop one off to make it nine. They blocked a punt earlier in this ballgame. Here comes the snap. Toot, under pressure, gets it away, a nice kick. Jones, taking it at the 30. Ducks by one guy. And he is going to be dragged down on good special teams coverage by the Hurricanes. 66, Darren McMurray down there to make the play. And we will be back after this. This bud's to everyone who tackles the changes and challenges of that new promotion. This bud's for you. There's no one else who does it quite the way you do. No problem. So this is you. For all your time, I'll never be a man. Give me five minutes. Yep, just for you. That distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do. Down about 14 yards to go. Back at their 26. 
They have lost four yards on a play from scrimmage. Record crowd here tonight, as you saw, 57,333 and one horse. Seminoles second and 14 at their 26. Wide receivers right and left. They're going to try the reverse with Hester. Hester in trouble. He is going to be chased around. Stopped at the 10-yard line. Let us get the identity of the man who was responsible for finally stopping that reverse. That's Julio Cortez. Looked like Cortez. Julio Cortez, number 99 from Miami. They stayed at home. That's the only way that you can stop a reverse. Cortez, the junior out of Columbus High in Miami. 6-1, 2 0 5 Florida State, third down and a lot. Third down and 30 yards to go. Really they surprised as successful as their running game has been right up the middle that they try something fancy at this point in time. Bobby Bowden is not known for conservatism on the offense. Here's Davis back to throw. Has a man open out there, and he drops the ball. That is Snipes. They rule it no catch out near the 30-yard line. Cortez again back covering along with Reggie Sutton and Jay Brophy. Let's take a look at Snipes in isolated instant replay. On the short side of the field, Snipes is just trying to ease his way down the sideline. Bellinger or Sutton coming up late to uh, hit him. As, much, as soft as that ball was in the air, Dave, uh, I thought Bellinger should have had a chance to get up and intercept it. Freshman punter Lewis Berry from the end zone. Eddie Brown is deep. Berry, Berry gets it out of there. Brown catches it at the Florida State 48. He cannot turn the corner, and he's rolled out of bounds at the 45. The up blocker did a very good job avoiding a clip. 67 defensively, Ulysses Robertson, the reserve linebacker, making the play on special teams. But Miami has good field position after the long loss on the reverse to Hester set up the fourth down play. As you can see, Kosar semi-limping back into the huddle. Only a 34-yard punt there by Lewis Berry. Hurricanes have the ball on the 46-yard line of Florida State going in. Jay Brophy watching the action. He's fired up. You heard Andy Descano talking about emotion. If it was ever gone, it has returned now to the Hurricanes. Kosar in trouble. Cannot get it away. He'll be sacked inside the 45. And going crazy with a sack dance down there is Brad Foytick. The 250-pound senior nose guard from Auburndale, Florida. Big defensive plays coming to the fore late in the ball game. Seminoles sack Kosar after the hurricane stopped the reverse by Hester. That'll go for a loss of 10. Second and 20 coming up. They wind the clock. 6.07 left. Hurricanes need a big play on offense here. And, and the Seminole defenders, as you can see to the left of your picture, waving for the crowd to make noise. And the crowd is really making noise. Kosar just can't get out a, an automatic. Keith Griffin with a football inside the 25 at the 22. But he was bumped out of bounds once at about the 33 yard line and once you're bumped out of bounds you can't come back in to catch the ball let's take another look at it they're going to rule it no catch it does appear defensive back bounced him out of bounds he came back in and did have one foot in when he caught the ball but he was, had already been outside they rule it no catch hearts rising to the throats of hurricane fans only to fall again. Third down and 20 at the 45-yard line. Eddie Brown, your side, out of your picture. Dennison flexed out a little bit. Stanley Shakespeare to the right side. Kosar. Long again. He has Eddie Brown down there. Brown fighting for it, and it's knocked away. Number 43 defensively with a great play for the Hurricanes, or for the Seminoles, is Brian McCrary. Junior defensive back from Germantown, Tennessee. Good Taking luck. the ball away from Eddie Brown, number 40. Kosar threw the ball up. 
They both had an equal chance to catch it. The defensive back, McCray, did a good job. Brown almost getting back to make a sensational catch. And the clock dwindles down, 5.34 remaining in the ballgame. Rick Newton are gonna... to putt, Hassan Jones back inside his 20. Oh, ten men up in the line of scrimmage. Tootin's got to get this ball off quick. Tootin now they back a, off. Tootin with a decent putt under pressure last time. He does it again. Not a great punt. Fair catch being way far, but Jones lets the ball go. And it's going to wind up dead at the 13-yard line in Seminole territory. Scoreboard saying, let's hear it for the defense of the Seminoles. Now their offense will get a chance. A 49-yard punt by freshman Rick Tootin. Good job. Pressure. Coming back from the psychological impact of having one blocked for a safety in the first half of this ballgame. And that safety is the margin by which the Seminoles now lead at 16 to 14. Absolute must that the Hurricanes stop them on this series. Bob Davis with a deep give and a great tackle being made on Allen by Jay Brophy, the big play linebacker, a preseason All-America for the Hurricane. There'll be a loss of a couple on that play. Successful sprint draw that they run to Allen. Didn't fool Brophy that time. He just stayed at home, played his position. He must have been keen on him because he, he floated out with him. Brophy, made the tackle. Brophy, 6'3", 227, senior out of Akron, Ohio. Tied for the team lead in interceptions with three. Watching Davis pass this time. Davis has a receiver, Hester, all by himself. And Hester is very near the first down at the 23-yard line. with the crossing patterns to send a receiver out and break him back in the middle underneath another receiver going out for a pass. That is a first down. We'll call it the 23-yard line of the Seminoles. Four and a half minutes now in the ball game. They lead by two. Allen still on his feet. Now the Hurricanes collapse on him, and he has stopped for a loss of a couple back at the 21. Julio Cortez again in there. Kevin Fagan, 95, another stopper. Tell that you've had two season football teams here tonight. I think with the exception of the one interception that Kosar threw, neither team has fumbled the ball away, and that's the only interception with as much action and hard hitting by the defenses as, as we've had. A very well-played ball game. The, team, the nation's fifth-ranked team, the Hurricanes, the Seminoles, unranked but impressive. Three on the second and 11. Deep handoff to Allen. Watch him run laterally. He is up to the 24 and then cut down by Reggie Sutton and Kenny Sisk. Small two-yard gain by Allen. Brings up third down. Most important third down play the Hurricanes have had all year right here. Third and about 10 yards to go. Ball right back, right back around the original line of scrimmage. We'll call it nine and a half. This is where the players are very happy when the defensive coach calls the defense, puts you in the right place. Luigi Thompson and Hassan Jones, the wide receivers, there are only two of them. As Davis goes straight back, blitz, just blitz, and he has Hassan Jones. He's knocked down short of the first down at the 37-yard line. He needed to get, like that, the 32-yard line. He needed to get to the 34. <laughs> Jay Brophy back to make another important play for the Hurricane defense. Their successful pass plays have been to send the wide receiver down about eight yards and come straight across the middle while they're bringing the halfback swinging out in the flat behind him. You and might think that Bobby Bowden would gamble here. That came up a yard short of the fourth of the first down. It will be fourth and one. Bowden apparently will not gamble here as Lewis Berry on the field to punt. Averaging 41.3, the freshman. Miami with nine people along the line of scrimmage. But Berry gets it out of there easily. Eddie Brown at the 38. Makes that the 33. Brown oh. finds a little room over the 40. Good run back. Across Good midfield to the 49-yard line of the Seminoles. Six on the stop is Lewis Berry, the punter. For Let's take another look at that run back, Dick. For a moment there, it looked like he might get away. 
Catches the ball. There's two Seminoles right down on him that should have made the tackle. Jukes one out there, then goes out to the right, gets away from another one, and all of a sudden has a wall, but he can't quite get up through the middle. Still a fine run by Mr. Brown. Hurricanes 49 yards away from Pater. They trail by two. 2.12 left in the game. Kosar to Stanley Shakespeare. He is dragged down along the 40-yard line. He is near first down territory at the 39. The clock stops as a referee motions for a look at the first down. They're going to bring the sticks in from the far sideline. That's a break for the Hurricanes as it gives them time to get in the huddle, call a play. They will be right on the ball when it comes back out. 2.01 remaining on the clock. An eyeball to eyeball battle. The team with the strongest willpower will win here. And the smartest coaching. Two extremely smart coaches. They did get the first down. It's at the 39 yard line of the Seminoles. Cool one to go. Freshman quarterback Bernie Kosar, cool under pressure. Has Johnson Matana in at a wide receiver to the near side. Stanley Shakespeare, far side. Shake has the ball. Shake struggling for the first down inside the 30 at the 29. And out of bounds to stop the clock at 141. Two-minute drill for the Hurricanes. They're getting down uh, closer now where if they don't make the first down, they have a shot at the field goal. 141 to go. Kosar threw that pass all the way across the field. The college hash marks are wider than the pro hash marks. And Kosar fired the ball out to Shakespeare. Another first down. Be interesting to see what kind of play they run here. At the 29-yard line. 141 remaining on the clock. Kosar, the deep handoff, running room for Keith Griffin. Griffin turns the corner, 20, 15, 10, and out of bounds at the nine-yard line. A fancy piece of running by Keith Griffin. Let's take another look at it. Hurricane fans are going to like this one from ground level. Ground level, great block. And Griffin, with his speed outside, turns up field, just trying to churn his, his legs. And out of bounds on the 10-yard line. They're well, well within the range of Jeff the Flea Davis. You see the time remaining. Now a game can turn around. We're going to have a timeout signal down on the field. And we'll go back to Miami for these words. Here comes the best Jaguar ever built. Born beautiful. Bred for performance. It's also the best-selling Jaguar in history. Here comes the beauty, the quick response, the walnut and leather, and the silence. Here comes the legend. The Jaguar XJ6 sedan just keeps getting... First and goal, Hurricanes at the nine. Keith Griffin ducking inside. He gets a couple down to about the seven-yard line, running the ball toward the middle of the field. A gang tackling job led by Alfonso Carriker for this Seminole defense. That play gained a yard. It's down to the eight yard line. Clock is running. 110 now remaining on it. Hurricanes trailing by two. A spine tangling ball game from Dope Campbell Stadium. Bernie Kosar, the remarkable freshman. Lines him up. Right, right, and left. Griffin again gets the call. Finds a little opening. He's down near the five-yard line. Carriker again on the stop. Howard Schnellenberger exhorting his troops. You can hear him whistle. Signal for a timeout. 33 seconds remaining on the clock. Now they start it again. And the Hurricanes are going to call timeout. 29 seconds remaining. 16 to 14 FSU leads. We will be back. Here comes the best Jaguar ever built. Born beautiful. Bred for performance. It's also the best-selling Jaguar in history. Here comes the beauty, the quick response, the walnut and leather, and the silence. 
Here comes the legend. The Jaguar XJ6 sedan just keeps getting better and better. Jaguar, a blending of art and machine. Test drive the XJ6 sedan at your Jaguar dealer. It is third down and goal to go for the Hurricane. The ball just inside the Seminole six-yard line. You see 29 seconds remaining on the clock. Poise and performance under pressure wins athletic competitions. Will it pay off for the Hurricanes here? Time is signaled in. They are up to the line. Triple tight end formation for Miami. Kosar. Albert Bentley inside the five to the three. Clock running, Albert approaching Bentley. the 22nd Carry mark. Stop to the center of the seven Howard line. Schnellenberger orchestrating activities. They're letting the clock run. They'll set it up for a game-winning field goal here. Now the timeout. Three seconds left. We will be back to see this game decided after this. Why do 100,000-mile flyers choose United? When you fill out 10 million tax forms a year, you have to be an expert at saving money. I pick my airline the same way, with a sharp pencil. Here you are, Mr. Block. Welcome to the friendly skies. United puts a sharp pencil to their fares. And they're the country's biggest airline. <laughs> Another good reason to fly United. After all, we're out to save money, not waste it. Right, United? People who fly for a living fly United's friendly skies. Jeff the Flea Davis, number three, will decide this ball game for the Hurricane. 5'6", 156-pound senior from Clearwater, Florida. 0 for 2 on field goals tonight. 10 of 19 this year. Prior to this game, had not missed from inside 40 yards. This will be a 19-yard attempt. The Seminoles with their entire team over on the near sidelines. Coach Schnellenberger knowing what rides on this kick. A trip to the Orange Bowl on January 2nd, if it's good. And Miami holds the lead. The Seminoles knowing that if they stop it or somehow regain the lead if it's good, they will be in for a good bowl bid after the season. Three seconds remaining on the clock. You see the situation right in front of you. You see the field goal block team for the Seminoles being coached by Bobby Bowden. A word of prayer along the sidelines. Davis now obviously back off the field, conferring with Coach Schnellenberger. The Seminoles trying to make Davis think about it. You hear the cheer go up. We'll let you watch this one along with us. 12 is Rick Tootin, the holder. Snapper is Chris Lee, whom you just saw on, on his knees on the sideline. It is good! The Hurricanes lead with no time remaining. They win the ball game 17 to 16. Enjoy the celebration.
An incredible finish to a remarkable ball game. The fifth ranked Hurricanes win their 10th in a row, an all time University of Miami record. Let us say the score 17 Miami, 16 Florida State. Miami cheerleaders triumphant on enemy territory. Sebastian the Ibis. Jeff Davis, the kicker. The man who won the ball game. And there is a live camera shot of the Hurricane locker room. Jack Fernandez. Greg Jones. Equipment manager of Marty Daly. Back on the field, Sebastian the Ibis and the celebration. A rather quiet though, Campbell Stadium. Seminoles saw their troops fight to the end and lose as the clock ran out by a score of 17 to 16. You could not ask for a more dramatic finish. Here is Richard Anderson with Coach Schnellenberger. Anderson, three. On the field with Coach Schnellenberger. Looks like there's a lot of oranges out here, Coach. Great win right at the end. Well, <clears throat> I'm just so pleased and proud of a football team. Uh, it's hard for me to say how I feel right now. Come here, Jeff. All right, Jeff. Jeff. There's a guy that knocked it through there. Well, Great kick. Thank Great. you, Coach. I, I told Coach before I went out that this was dedicated to him because I lost the game for him last year against Maryland. And this one's for Coach Snellenberg because he's the best coach in America. Just keep kicking him. Field goal kick in America. That's great, Coach. Uh, you know, this was uh, the hardest thing that we've done since we've been at the university. This uh, Florida State football team, I've, I didn't think they could play that good. Their defense was probably better than our offense was today, but they just kept coming, and our kids kept coming. It's a hell of a tribute to a lot of great players. I think so, and here's Coach Oliver Dada, the head of the defense. Come here, Tom, Keep Tom, over here. Oh, Coach, Jesus great defense today. That was a tough running game they threw at you. Great. They're great running backs. We knew we were going to have trouble, but... One more to go. Yes, sir. Great game, Coach. Thank you. Back up to Dave. R Richard, eloquence pouring all over from the field. The extreme of emotion that comes when you win a football game as the Hurricanes won tonight. Look at the celebration. Glenn Dennison, Fred Robinson in the Miami locker room. Coach Chris Vigotis crossing in front of you. Backup quarterback Benny Testaverde. saw veteran defensive line coach Harold Allen many years a hurricane assistant coach walk into your picture just before we went to the final score 17 to 16 the fifth ranked hurricanes have won their ball game this afternoon go live to the Miami locker room and Andy Liscano. Okay, right here with Jeff Davis who kicked the winning field goal. You know, Carl Smith and I were talking right before you did it. If somebody deserved a second chance, you did. Well, I appreciate that. I sure do. I, I got to say that I thank the Lord because the Lord helped me on that one. He sure did. And I dedicated to Coach Snellenberger because I missed one last year against Maryland and we lost the game. And this one was for him because he's a great coach. Is it true that on Thursday he told his team that he had never been in this situation before as a player or a coach? He wanted you guys to win it for him? He sure did. And I, and I think it was a total team effort because the guys came out the second half and we, and we knew we had to do it. And we went there and we did it. Jeff, congratulations. And I know you guys are just thrilled with that to go to the Orange Bowl. Yeah, we sure are. And uh, we got a lot, lot, of, lot of practice time. We're just going to get ready for Nebraska. as the Hurricane cheerleaders celebrate victory on the sidelines. We'll be back with more from Doug Campbell Stadium. You stay with us. You want
want movies of the kids? Yeah. Do not get a portable tape deck and camera. Why not? Too complicated? For you, it's too complicated. <laughs> Besides, you'll keep losing all those things you gotta lug around. <laughs> you'll get tangled in the cord, guaranteed. You won't have those problems with new Beta Movie. Introducing the first home video camera recorder that leaves the tape deck at home. For instant movies, there's one uncomplicated solution. Guys, I'm just gonna say I want the Sony. Sony. Beta Movie, the Sony of home video camera recorders. From Pontiac comes the one-of-a-kind 84 Firebird Trans Am. You can order it with aerodynamic ground effects, a high-output 5-liter V8, high-tech turbo wheels, and a close-ratio 5-speed. And you probably will. Trans Am, only from Pontiac. We build it. For Eddie Hutter, whose car had the muscle, but whose gas lacked guts, there's Gulf Super Unleaded, the gas with guts. For Bill Bruder, who paid for the same repair again and again, Gulf Car Care dealers do it right, guaranteed. For Sheriff Duval, whose car lacked the pickup to make the pickup, there's Gulf Super Unleaded, the gas with guts. Gulf, everything we do makes driving better for you. for everyone who's getting the 1984 Olympic game ready for the world. The Olympics take teamwork, and Budweiser is proud to be part of that team. For all you do. This Bud's for you. Miami 17, Florida State 16, the final score from Doak Campbell Stadium. Back to the locker room, and here's Andy. All right, in the, lock, in the locker room with head coach Harlan Schnellenberger. First of all, congratulations. I have to ask you a question. Heard the story that on Thursday you sat this team down and said you had never been in this situation as a player or a coach if they would win this one for you. True story? I said that. Yes, I did. I'm uh, not ashamed that I did. And by golly, they did just what they said they were going to do. They won it. Bobby Bowden had his football team so very well prepared, so fired up, and that crowd was something unreal out there tonight. And it was a tribute to him and, and a real tribute to these guys because they had to not only beat Bobby Bowden, his Seminoles, but all these people in the stands and to come from behind like they did in the fourth quarter. It's a real tribute to them, their coaches, and everybody that's associated with them. I remember the week of the Mississippi State game. And you said the thing I feared worse was a dog fight. You had a dog fight on your hands all night. It wasn't in the fourth quarter. It was from the opening whistle to the very end. Our kids came out strong, ran, took the first one right in there, and then they rose up, and it was a war after that. Oh, thank you very much. Dick Anderson to you. They start the season saying this is a football. They end the season by saying this is an orange. We have Stan Marks with the Orange Bowl committee in front of us. Stan, are you going in to give him the invitation? No, it, uh, we're still got a meeting. We'll probably have a meeting Monday morning, our regular time, 7.30. And uh, I know all of our members are back at the Orange Bowl office now. And uh, uh, I'll see you Monday morning. Get excited, Stan. We just won. Well, uh, let me taste that orange, Dick. <laughs> That's sweet. Very sweet. That's sweet. That's sweet. That's good news. And Dave. Okay, Richard, thank you very much. In the midst of the boisterous celebration, the Hurricanes follow tradition and recite the Lord's Prayer in the locker room after every game. Win or lose. just gotten a rare glimpse of tradition in a football locker room following a game. You rarely see that.
the Hurricanes with their post-game prayer. Let's take a moment now to look back over this remarkable, unprecedented season for the University of Miami. The first Hurricane team ever to win 10 games. The first Hurricane team naturally ever to win 10 in a row. Let's go back and begin at Florida Field September 3rd and take it through the season with the highlights. The season began on a sour note with a loss. Speedy Neal's first quarter fumble gave the Gators excellent field position. Florida's record-setting senior quarterback, Wayne Peace, threw a touchdown pass and led the Gators to a 28-3 victory. The Hurricanes even their record the next week in Houston. Jeff Davis booted a long field goal, and freshman quarterback Bernie Kosar hooked up with Glenn Dennison for a touchdown. Miami won at 29-7. Then the home opener against Purdue. Kosar and Stanley Shakespeare combined for two touchdowns. Backup quarterback Kyle Vanderwin saw action and scored on a touchdown keeper. The Hurricanes' defense shut out the Boilermakers, and when Kosar hit Keith Griffin in the end zone, Miami had a 35-0 win. Week number four, the opponent, Notre Dame, another Miami shutout. Jay Brophy with a key interception. Fullback Speedy Neal scored a touchdown, but it was the defense that stole the show. They blocked a field goal here en route to a 20-0 Miami victory. The best offensive showing of the season came against Duke. Kosar hit Eddie Brown on a bomb for a touchdown. And later he found David Kintai in the end zone, the final 56 to 17 Miami. The Hurricanes made it five in a row with a win over Louisville. Kenny Calhoun intercepted a pass at his own eight yard line and returned it 92 yards for a touchdown. Albert Bentley scored on a one-yard plunge, Miami 42-14 over the Cardinals. Then it was on to Starkville for a game with Mississippi State. Jeff Davis got the Canes off on the right foot with a field goal. And Kosar passed to Eddie Brown for a touchdown. Miami won it 31-7 for its sixth win in a row. Soggy Cincinnati, the Hurricanes made it seven straight. Albert Bentley took off on a long run that put the Canes in front early. The defense was solid again. Rodney Bellinger came up with an interception in the 17-7 Hurricane victory. Week number nine, the opponent nationally ranked West Virginia. Kosar found Dennison for an early touchdown. The West Virginia offense was silenced Miami even blocked a field goal in the 20-3 win. And then it was East Carolina. Albert Bentley turned a short pass into a big gain to set up a Miami touchdown. And with the game on the line in the closing seconds, Kosar sneaked in from a yard out, giving Miami a 12-7 win, its ninth victory in a row, and keeping the Orange Bowl hopes alive. Miami 17, Florida State 16. Miami heading for the Orange Bowl. We're heading back down to the locker room and Andy Lascano. David, we're here with quarterback Bernie Kosar. Can words describe how you feel and how you felt when Davis's kick went through the uprights? Uh, I'd say that's probably the most, probably the most emotional moment of my life right there. And uh, I just thank God what it, the way it ended up. You know, all week long, you were the only person that I heard say anything good about the Florida State defense. So many people said you can score anytime you want on them, but you were the guy that said their defense is going to be so pumped up by this crowd that they're going to come to play, and they did. Did, obviously yeah, they played uh, they played a really 
emotional game, and uh, you know they came to play, and they uh, they were getting a good uh, you know good defensive line surge, and uh, just made for an exciting game. They beat you up there a couple of times. I saw a couple of times they brought you up on the sidelines, had to uh, kind of revive you. Uh, that's uh, you know football's a contact sport, and that's just part of the game, I guess. <laughs> I guess it's academic now to say that it's on to the winner of the Nebraska Oklahoma game. Do you guys have any preferences? I want to play Nebraska. <laughs> All right, Bernie. Thanks a lot. Good luck to you. Congratulations. All right, David, back upstairs to you. It has been an exhausting night, has it not, fans? Hurricanes win 17 to 16. Back to Doak Campbell Stadium after this. <laughs> If you have the dubious honor of telling your boss the copier's broken, and you'd do anything to avoid facing him, the copier is broken. Tell your boss about Panasonic copiers. Advanced electronics help prevent breakdowns. The magnified toning process makes great copies. Great enlargement. Great rooms, too. So tell your boss it's time for a Panasonic. Introducing the new mileage champion of America, the 1984 Honda Civic CRX. With this incredible sports car, you could drive from Florida to California on a mere four tankfuls of gas. Why anyone would want to go to California is more than we can understand. We're the South Florida Honda dealers. We sell the new Honda CRX and all the other marvelous new Hondas instead of ordinary cars. Sometimes you feel real good when you know your car will perform well. Well, that's why stunt driver Buzz Bundy relies on mobile detergent gasoline. After all, a car with a clean carburetor performs better. It's as simple as that. Mobile detergent gasoline. For your everyday driving needs. Panasonic invites you to step ahead of your time. Step ahead of your time to the next dimension in television. Panasonic Color Television with CompuFocus, a system of TV optics that can produce a picture so sharp and clear the TV set you're watching isn't sharp and clear enough to show it. Step ahead of your time to Panasonic Color Television, more than just slightly ahead of our time. The smoke has cleared literally from the fireworks that have exploded here at Doak Campbell Stadium as the Hurricanes exploded on that last field goal. The winner by Jeff Davis as time ran out to win the ball game 17 to 16, their 10th victory in a row. It has been an exciting night. It has been a rare night. It has been an historic night, and it is not finished yet. We will have more live coverage for you in our 11 o'clock news block on News Center 7 Sports with Doug Vaughn at 11. Then Doug Vaughn and I will be live at the Miami International Airport to welcome these hurricanes back when they arrive from Tallahassee around 12.30 and to 1 o'clock tonight. You'll want to follow it all only on South Florida 7. This is Dave Willingham speaking for Dick Anderson. Let's go down to Dick Anderson and see what he has for us. Dick? Thanks, Dave, and it's certainly a, a fitting end to an emotional game, winning it in the end, but it makes it all the sweeter that now they have the oranges, and we're going to bring the orange ball back to Miami. And now to Andy Lascano in the locker room. All right, Dick, thanks a lot. You know, I think the only thing that needs to be said at before the game, Howard Schnellenberger told us that words couldn't describe the importance of this game, the Canes playing for the number one spot in America. The scene in this locker room, teardrops, teardrops of happiness, uh, of emotion. The dream has come true for the University of Miami, and even now in the locker room, you can hear shouts of coach of the year for Howard Schnellenberger and his staff. It's, it's just been a great ending to a great season. David? Thank you, Andy. Our thanks to our director, John Crow, to our producer, Len Jasko, to all the people who worked with us here in Tallahassee to help us bring you this ball game tonight. And let's take a look now at some of the action from this ball game. Unprecedented moment in Hurricane football. Recaptured for you. Now speaking for.
aboard Dick Anderson, Andy Lascano, our entire South Florida 7 crew. This is Dave Willingham wishing you good night from Dope Campbell Stadium in Tallahassee.